welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today I'm so happy because Simi Lalo, oh, I'm going to say it wrong. How do you say your last name? Simi? You can do it. How do you say Hawaiian with an L? Hawaiian. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> oh, I do that. People tell me their names and then I go to say it and I'm like, Ah, like, no, I, I understand. <laughs> now, Sammy and I are a part of an amazing group on Clubhouse so called the Marketing Cafe. And uh, if you are a Clubhouse fan, I suggest you come over and, you know, join the Marketing Cafe because we have what's almost 50 now, 50 different Barista. experts in marketing. And yes. we're called baristas because it's a cafe and you come sit at the table and we talk about all things marketing and all of us come at it from, you know, unique, different perspectives. So the conversations are always very interesting. And yeah. of course, there's always this rivalry going on. Like there, there's <laughs> Richard and Steven and you just never know what's going to come out of their mouths. Right? They add spice to every conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of laughs too. But I for love sure. the format because it's called Open Mic Sessions for Entrepreneurs, and it gives everyone an opportunity to come on up to the table and ask your questions. So here's the thing. If you want to talk to me in person, so if you've been listening to the podcast and you're thinking, man, I really want to ask him questions. Okay, I got a deal for you. My time <laughs> slot is 9.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on the Marketing Cafe on Clubhouse. So come on there and you can ask me any questions you want. I will. Answer. And Kim is awesome. Kim always has gems to share. I tell you, I love being at Kim's table. So <laughs> take her up on that offer. <laughs> and you know what? I love being on Simi's tables too, right? Like, oh, thank just, you. We, we all work together so amazingly. So I knew yes. I wanted to have Simi on the podcast. So Simi, why don't you take a few minutes, introduce yourself, talk to us about, you know, what it is that you do, how you help people, and some of your entrepreneurial journey. Awesome. Well, first of all, Kim, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Um, like I said, you know, my I, I met Kim on Clubhouse and all my experiences um, at Kim's tables have been phenomenal. Um, and I, I knew that if Kim was inviting me to something, um, it could only be as phenomenal, at least as phenomenal as she is. So um, I feel privileged to be on your podcast. And oh, um, yeah, honestly, honestly, and I'm inspired by your story and your journey and the bits I've gotten to hear. Um, and yeah, so as far as my journey is concerned, maybe I'll I'll start with a quick intro, Simi Lawayan, again, Hawaiian with an L, um, originally from Nigeria, it's where I was born and raised, and um, I left to attend college, and for the rest of my life, I was traveling the world um, up till now, and um, I had always known that I wanted to help people, you know, I, I, I always knew that whatever I did, I remember in middle school even, um, my classmates would, thought that I, you know, I was an old soul because of things I was interested in, <laughs> you know, the things that they would just look at me like why why are you thinking about these things we're kids we should be having fun but i was always concerned for example about you know in nigeria there were so many issues uh politically there was instability um socioeconomic issues and i was always concerned about hey what happens after we leave high school and we go into college like will there be jobs those kinds of things um, I had the privilege and the blessing to meet someone um, somewhere in my, I don't remember the exact year, but it was while I was in high school, um, and she just took an interest in me. Um, she had a background in psychology and career counseling, and um, I think for the first time she opened my eyes to this idea, excuse me, I'm sniffing a little bit, she opened my eyes to this idea that your interest, your passion, um, could give you an inclination as to what your calling is, you know, and so at that point I began to explore um, a career and um, academic journey um, that would align with my interest in helping people. Long story short, I had the privilege to move to the United States and attend college. So while in college, my, for my undergrad, I studied uh, management and human resources 
with a minor in psychology, um, went on to grad school and um, studied management with a focus on global leadership. And um, the pathway was paved for me from that point forward. Um, I had the opportunity to remain and teach at the university where I was, um, where I had graduated from grad school. And it was then I began to make, to recognize that, you know, there are a lot of young people graduating from university who find it difficult to, uh, I would say, find their footing in the world of work. Um, and so I began to think through how do we make it easier for this transition to happen? Um, likewise, you know, I, I had within my circle a lot of, um, you know, stay at home moms. Um, I, I love to connect multi-generationally. So I, I had this group of, you know, older women who maybe they had retired or they had lost a husband or something. And um, my first um, stint in entrepreneurship was setting up a business alongside a partner um, to create a means of generating income by empowering people to turn their craft into a business, essentially. So um, we had artisans, you know, whether you were in school and just looking to make some extra money or you were retired and wanting to do something, um, we just became a platform that would showcase um, whatever it was you're doing, um, provide access to market. Um, if you ask me what happened to that business, it did not go very well because there was a lot I did not know about business at the time. But I would say um, that experience um, demonstrated to me the importance of having an actual business model, emphasis there on the business, right? So I was very passion driven. Um, I had a desire to help people. I had a desire to create opportunities, um, but I did not understand business and that for business to happen, you need to make money, right? Um, so, so I, you know, that's that's a summary. I, I learned a lot. Thankfully, there were people in in my life and the life of my business partner at the time who were experienced and pointed out a few things to us that we didn't take seriously then, but we eventually came to realize they had a point. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about. Oh, I hear you laughing, but <laughs> I remember the, the first time. Um, somebody told me you know if you're not making money in your business you have a hobby not a business and i really want oh so true out because it just really <laughs> really hit home i'm like no i have a business it's like you making money uh, no nah, not yet <laughs> but, yes know, but one thing i loved about what you said was you know we we sometimes we hop into entrepreneurship not having a clue what we're doing well i think mm -hmm. all of us do actually pretty naturally well. <laughs> um, and then you realize later that you know there's there's these all these other skills and mm. things that you have to learn like yeah you know, for me my i have a similar journey like i love to help people and i wanted to help th people through business which was great i i had the helping people down <laughs> that part was taken care of the business part well that took me not so time. much <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening and this sounds like you you're not alone right mm -hmm. um but yeah no you're absolutely right and it's it's realizing that passion passion is very important i honestly think passion is what will keep you going uh, but passion on its own is not enough and that's um something it took a little bit of convincing for me right i was this idealist i thought you know if you care enough about people and you just put so much heart into it but it's important to have um you, you need to have those foundational elements in place and so the rest of my entrepreneurial journey because i didn't stop there um i did keep trying um but with each new venture i would learn something new and i think one of the most important important lessons I learned early on was, okay, I'm not strong in the area of financial planning. That's not my forte. Um, and to be honest with you, it wasn't so much that, I mean, I could sit down, I suppose, and learn basic bookkeeping. I had a business background, so I understood, you know, P&Ls and, and so on. I think it was more that I was not... Um, as motivated in that area um, and and I was I, I had to focus on my core competency and understand that and so later on in business yes I began to pay attention to the metrics and the indicators that needed to be paid attention to but more importantly I made sure that I partnered with people who could complement my skill sets 
Um, and I'll take the next major uh, venture that I dabbled into um, actually started in China. So after a few, you know, after working um, in the U.S. for a few years, I had the opportunity to move to China um, and I was working with a an interesting startup. They were internationalizing universities in China, low tier universities, and helping to build programs that were that were up to standard, global standards, um, and students could transfer to universities in the US and so on. But during that time, again, as usual, I kept my eye up for where there was a problem to be solved. And one of the biggest emerging problems then was um, a lot of students graduating, um, since they were going through this program, they would learn some English, um, but they could not land jobs because they didn't have the background or the connections, etc. Um, long story short, I decided to find an industry, high growth industry, for which um, you know where there was high demand for the, their specific skill set. So we need um, bilingual young people who are familiar with the environment and we trained them as uh, sourcing agents for e-commerce businesses around the world that wanted to source from China. And that business we ran for a couple of years. I ran in partnership with a brilliant friend of mine who was Chinese. Um, and I, I'm, I'm proud to say that we did a lot better. <laughs> uh, we exceeded our expectations. Uh, we created jobs for several. Um, and eventually, we, we did pivot out of that business um, for a couple of reasons. My partner in China had to move to the US to get married. Um, and the our, our major client base change their model um, and so what eventually happened was some of our core team members went on to launch their own sourcing businesses so net positive outcomes um, around the same time i was offered the opportunity to come to nigeria and do some consulting so i, I returned home um, and for the next about six seven years i mostly worked consulting to support small businesses and startups in their endeavors um, but i also did launch another business when i moved to nigeria social enterprise and that's still running today. Um, it's called Jazz Academy and its sister business, uh, Jazz Projects. And what we're doing is we are creating an opportunity for, um, you know, I, I often say young people out of work, but honestly, it's anyone um, who is looking to earn um, a meaningful income. And um, what we do is, again, identify high growth industries. Um, we focus right now on digital skills and we provide a way for um, for anyone who's interested to gain those skills um, rapidly. And so I'm leveraging my experience and my background um, in education design, learning design, to create learning opportunities that will very quickly take you from zero to competent in a specific skill um, in a relatively short amount of time. And then on the other side of that, we're helping small businesses and startups scale uh, by providing them access to affordable talent. And so we match um, anyone who goes through our program is entered into a talent pool and uh, small businesses can reach out to to ask for freelance workers, remote workers. Um, and so that's kind of where I am today as far as my entrepreneurial journey. Um, there's definitely a lot of others in between, but I figured I'd, fi I'd focus on uh, sort of the core businesses that I have uh, that have brought me up to this point. So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> I love it, Simi. You know, one thing I wanted to point out is sometimes where we begin in our entrepreneurial journey is not where we end up. Amen. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started out in MLM, network marketing, all of that kind of stuff. I transitioned into owning a business from home that had been given to me by, you know, uh, my mother-in-law, uh, you know, and uh, each, each one taught me different skills and mm -hmm. talents and abilities. And, and none of them really had any kind of success, but each time I learned something. Absolutely. You know, and then when I started the publishing company in 2015, it was like everything came together and it was, I don't know who was I, I think it was here on the podcast. I was recording a podcast episode and I was talking to the person about the fact, you know, when your passion, your purpose, and your skills mm, all converge, meet, you know, yes, and that, that's, what that's magic. In 2015, 
you know, my passion, my purpose, and my skills all finally met in the same place. <laughs> that's, that's joy right there. <laughs> right. And that's also when you start to see success. Yeah. Right. Cause sometimes you just, you go through all these things as an entrepreneur and you don't understand why, and you feel like this failure. Yeah. You know? And I mean, I, I've been an entrepreneur almost 20 years at that point. Right. Like, yeah. You know, that's a long time. Yeah. But each time I learned, I grew, I got better. Right. Absolutely. And all of a sudden it all met. So, I, you know, I want to encourage you if you're listening today and you know, you're an entrepreneur and you feel like you're struggling, you're, you're in the right place. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, That's good. Don't quit. Now there may be things you have to do. There was times I took jobs, right? We, I yeah. still have to bring money Same here. In. Same you here. Know, my business wasn't, my business wasn't doing it. You know, I drove school bus for three years at the time. It was the perfect job because I was I was I worked when my kids were in school. I was off when they there were you off go. and they gave us a That's second good. vehicle. That's good. <laughs> right? So, you know, I, I had worked a few jobs throughout the time mm. my kids were growing up. But my heart had always been entrepreneurship. So, you know, don't quit. And if you have to take a job to bring in money, that's okay. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to yes. do. But don't don't give up on your entrepreneurial dream. Yes. I agree. So good. <laughs> so good, Kim. And yeah, I mean, a couple of things you said in there, you, you lumped in there some of my sort of parting thoughts. Um, but I, I did want to call out, you know, the way you explained, um, you took a job at certain seasons in your life when it was necessary to do so. I would argue that part of the entrepreneurial journey, because it is a journey, right, um, is identifying, I mean, what do we do as entrepreneurs? We identify a problem, we figure out a solution. Sometimes solutioning means taking that job to bridge, whether it's a financial gap or it's to meet a need, family need. You know, I know a lot of entrepreneurs who for a season said, hey, I want to be home with my children during the season of their life. Or I have a friend right now who has um, taken a job, she's just um, getting ready to resign from this role, but she decided to take a job at her children's school for the last three years so she could spend time with them as she was building this thing on the side. And so um, I think part of being an entrepreneur, it's not simply about going gung-ho um, and not paying attention to all the other stuff in your life. It's about figuring out how these things converge. And sometimes, like you said there, Kim, we don't necessarily see all the converging lines, right? We're just doing the next best thing that's presented to us. And the beauty of the, the way life is designed is that ultimately there is a convergence point. If you're always making the next best decision in front of you, um, if you are taking those risks, um, and if you are, if, if you are getting up each time you feel like you have failed, if you're failing forward, it always comes together, you know, and, and it's, I, I love how that happens. You know, when you were talking, it made me think of something, you know, some, so many times, you know, we see on social media, this instant success. And, and if, if no you're listening thing. on the podcast, if you're on the video, you can see, I put, you know, the quotation marks, right. Around <laughs> it, right? Quote, unquote, instant success. And most times we think, oh, how come I'm not, I'm mm. not right. Mm. But if you look at most of those people, Okay, in a sense, they had instant success, but they had five to 10 years experience before they had the yes, success. Exactly. Right? Very rarely does someone do something the first time and it becomes this immediate overnight. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it's so rare. Don't That's not the norm. It. It's not the norm, right? So, you know, don't get caught up in watching other entrepreneurs. You know, you have your own journey. Was I frustrated at times? Oh, you better believe it. You know, I was watching people with a whole lot of skills, less talents and abilities skyrocket while I struggled. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make sense to me. But, you know, one thing I realized, and I, I, I'm talking about it in my author to authority book, um, you know, you talked about pa entrepreneur needing passion. And I, I, I definitely agree. But I think there's one thing that you need more than passion, because mm. if you have visibility, 
if you're seen, if you can be seen as an entrepreneur, you will build your business faster than you will with passion. That's passion good. Alone. I agree. Now, don't get me wrong. You have to have passion because if you don't believe in your products, your services, you know, if you don't have a heart to serve, to me, entrepreneurship is a form of servanthood, right? Absolutely. Then, then you're not going to enjoy the journey. You're not going to enjoy it. So passion is, is, is definite. But, you know, I had tons of passion. Still had no money in my pocket. Right? Only, <laughs> I know about that. <laughs> it was only when I became visible. Mm. When I when the when I let the world see me and really get to know me, yeah. that was when I started to see success. Yeah, so good. No, that's good, and it makes me think of um, the last it was not a it wasn't nine to five per se, but the last long term consulting um, job I had, I I worked with someone who had been in media for a long time, and we were working on a. a project that in itself had some disability, um, but he was always emphatic about, you know, the PR side of things that, oh, we need to announce that, or we need to put something out to the press. And I was always thinking like, why do we need, like, don't we don't always need to talk about things. I tend to be more reserved. It's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, success, you know, in the background matters just as much as what's out there. But very quickly though, I learned, and, and the way he would put it is, look, we can be doing incredible things here, but if nobody knows our success, will be very short-lived. Um, the project we were on was one that needed public support for continuity. You know, there was some politics around it. Anyway, so long story short, honestly, reflecting now on that program, it ran for about four years and was extended after our tenure was up. Um, rode primarily on the fact that we told the story every step of the way we were telling the story and so people could come on board it became more than just a thing we were doing it was not this stunt we were pulling but it became this story that we were all co-creating you know and so tying that back to what you said there kim um that's definitely something that i personally especially being very private um as an individual I've had to learn that visibility counts. And it's not about showing off without substance, right? It's <laughs> you know, not, not, not exactly. It's not it's, ego. It's, it's, the way I equate it is, you know, if you let yourself shine, mm. right? You're not looking at people going, I'm shining. But no, if exactly. you let yourself shine. Yes, that's good. Others see your light. So good. Right? But if you hide it, it's not doing anyone any good anyway, right? Yeah. So, Simi, we've only got a couple of minutes left. We kind of got distracted, but man, it's been a really great <laughs> Is so, it that time already? Okay. Can you share one tip that you've learned that you think, you know, the audience would really um, can benefit from? And then how can people get a hold of you? So if they, they've heard what we've talked about today, you know, if they've heard about, you know, your jazz stuff and maybe you're interested either in learning more about it or helping mm -hmm. and support it, how can they get a hold of you? Okay, all right, so yeah, that's that's a great question about one thing. Um, I've got a hundred things, but I think the one thing I'll hang on to is, you know, in, in sales and marketing, they'll say, you know, know your ABCs, always be, I don't know, selling or ABS, always be closing, right? Um, and I, I say always be learning, um, and I, I don't mean that, sim I'm not, just bias because learning is kind of my uh, background. But to be honest with you, I don't think any entrepreneur can keep innovating, keep reinventing themselves, keep up with evolving trends if you're not always learning. And so that looks very different. I think it's easier to do today than ever before. So many resources out there. Um, Kim's just put out a book. Um, and I, I love that we are in an era where there is access to information and knowledge more than ever before. Uh, there's always an opportunity to, to learn. And it could be as simple as having something you're subscribing to, you know, and, and every week this newsletter comes through and you see the highlights of what's trending in your industry. Um, it could be as simple as having a, um, you know, setting a target to read one book a month, whatever that looks like for you. I think there's opportunity all around to learn. Um, 
And so I'll leave it at, at that. And as far as reaching me, yes, we would love to connect. Um, you can find us online at jazzacademy.com and jazz is spelled J A double S Academy dot com and um, our social media handles are the same on Twitter and Instagram Jazz Academy J A S S Academy and um, yeah so feel free to reach out we would love to hear from you um, I'm also on Clubhouse under the moniker and there was joy Okay, so it's not related at all to to my business. It's just a, a reflection of of the one thing that keeps me going, um, and and one thing that I want to spread to spread. So while you're out there um, checking out uh, the marketing cafe, look me up um, at and there was joy. Timmy, when is your room on the marketing cafe? Oh, good question. So um, right now it's on Saturdays and Mondays. Um, the more consistent time is the Saturday one. Um, and it's Saturday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. So figure that out in your time zone. And we would love to have you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Simi. Lalawin. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was practicing that in my brain. <laughs> So proud of you, Kim. <laughs> so Cindy and I have been on the Author to Authority podcast today. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget, you. my book launches in January. And when you purchase the print book, not only are you going to get the print book, you're going to get the Kindle book, the audio book, and a free Ooh, summit. Nice so, deal. If you want to get on the launch list, go to www.authortoauthority.com forward slash get dash the dash book. And I'm trying to put it into a song. I haven't quite gotten it yet. <laughs> it has a nice rhythm to it the way you said it though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see you on the next show. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now. Thank you. Bye.